becomes stays too long, we become desensitized, and we end up into the stage two, which is resistance. And resistance stage, Hans Selye talked about, was really more defined by cortisol and long-term cortis Adrenaline is our short-term stress hormone, where cortisol is our long-term stress hormone. So if we're under stress for long periods of time, cortisol comes into play more so. Uh, both these hormones are made in our adrenal glands, which I mentioned earlier, which are these two little glands that sit right next to our kidneys, and they're uh, responsible for regulating our body's response to stresses. So cortisol, when it's around long periods of time, it starts having consequences for our health, uh, including we often seem to gain weight, and especially around the abdomen, central weight gain, and so if people uh, you know, are gaining weight around there, and we're seeing more and more kids that are showing up with a lot of obesity and weight gain, and a big piece of it potentially could be the stress, long-term stress components and long-term cortisol states of mind. One of the things cortisol does is it, it suppresses your immune system and your inflammation responses. And we see that in medicine, we use cortisone shots or um, you know, prednisone orally, which is a synthetic cortisol essentially, to deal with an overactive immune system uh, in like an autoimmune disease or um, with a real severe inflammation issues. So what we can see when cortisol is up long-term, the immune system comes down. And so people are much more susceptible to getting sick. I don't know about anyone else, but a lot of times after test seasons, after finals and stuff, I'd almost always get a cold or flu and crash. Uh, and, I, and it's a typical, I hear a lot of people describe that scenario, and I think it's because you've been up in the stress, you've had lots of cortisol for long periods of time, and then your body crashes and your immune system's kind of wiped out and you pick up something and get sick. Uh, but we also see other things with cortisol around. One thing is it, it really affects our digestive tract, and so lots of stomach aches, um, inflammation, constipation, diarrhea, just everything off. Um, it can cause long-term issues with uh, cholesterol buildup uh, and atherosclerosis deposits in our arteries. They did a study not too long ago of children who died in accidents uh, and they looked at their arteries and almost every child, I think by the time they were 18, had some level of atherosclerosis deposited of cholesterol in their arteries before they were 18, which is kind of dramatic to think about what the consequences of that are. Uh, and diabetes, especially type 2 diabetes, can come into play because cortisol tends to raise blood sugar and keep it up higher longer. And so it can make us more susceptible to insulin resistance and diabetes. So again, many of us, I think, are existing in this stage too a lot. And so this has consequences for us, but it has big consequences for our children too. And so it's something we want to keep an eye on. Uh, and we don't want our kids hanging out in this stage all the time. Uh, stage 3 then becomes when a body can't keep up anymore to the stress and cortisol levels start to crash and burn and we can't make enough cortisol to keep up with our stresses and we start basically getting more adrenaline surges and so we start seeing interesting symptoms. So we often see much more fatigue, uh, much more, um, we start seeing like uh, crashing blood pressure, low blood pressure, we'll get uh, surges of adrenaline which will cause heart palpitations, racing heart, low blood sugar episodes because we don't have the cortisol around, fatigue, fibromyalgia, di more digestive problems, environmental chemical sensitivities, uh, you can even get into stuff like panic attacks, insomnia, anxiety, and things like that. Um, I don't see these symptoms as much as in children as I do in adults, but I will see them sometimes in kids, and it is kind of a, a real red flag to me when I'm seeing a lot of these symptoms that the kid has been under potentially long-term stress, um, or their body is just really unable to can keep up with the stresses, and so we need to work on how we can build up those resources for our kids to be able to function better. Okay, so... Um, that's kind of the problem, and that's where we are. So what do we do about this? So one of the lines you, we often hear when people go to the doctor and they complain of stress is, well, you need to reduce your stress. Or if someone's having health issues, the, the doctor observes, you need to reduce your stress. And I always think that's one of the silliest things you can say to someone. And I always joke, I'm going to write a book saying, you have to reduce your stress and other stupid things doctors tell you. Because really, can you reduce your stress? I mean, sometimes yes. And in our kids, I think we have more room to intervene than often than adults. And so if we can step them on a path early, I think it's a great choice and a great option. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, we can't pick that they still have to stay in school. Uh, we can't pick um, that, you know, you know, if someone's, you know, sick or dying in the family, or if there's something going on significant, uh, our stresses are going to come. We're, this world has stress. And so we can't, get away from it, we need to learn how to deal with it. 
So one thing like we talked about is, hey, if we can reframe some of these stresses um, that are going on, can we look at it more as an, a challenge to be overcome rather than a burden to bear? And so I think that that's something we can really try to teach our children, try to build resilience in our kids, you know, get them excited, see, help them see it as a game, as a challenge, as something to do. Um, I know one of our daughters was having some boredom issues at school and uh, she started doing uh, some of our different activities uh, that she got really excited about, doing these puzzles and games. And, and it was really excited to see the light turn back on because it was kind of disconcerting to see her just kind of bored and overwhelmed and not want to do it, you, you know, just because of different reasons. So again, we need to sometimes reframe some of these things for our kids and I think that's great. Um, we do need to start trying to help our kids improve their expectations how we can um, you know so let's let's look at our stresses take an inventory see what's going on is our kid overburdened is it too much is there some things we can pull back and I think if there's health stuff going on then yeah we might need to make some changes um, and sometimes we you know our kids aren't gonna say it they're gonna say oh I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine but if we're seeing the cracks and phrase then we need to as parents make a change and so sometimes we have to intervene even if they're not happy about it um, I think sometimes therapy can be helpful. Behavioral counseling, uh, cognitive therapy, I think those things can be really helpful for adults, but even with kids. I've seen some kids who, especially if they've been through something traumatic, that it, it can be really healing for them to kind of finally start to work through some stuff. I think spiritual practices can really help, and I think imparting some of our spiritual traditions to our children and the next generation is really a good I think and it's helpful for our kids to to continue on in these spiritual traditions I think are helpful uh, and then I think also trying to get our kids to focus on other things than themselves um, trying to you know be help others you know there's always someone who needs help and who's in a much worse situation and sometimes if we can help others we can look at our own situation and realize we don't have it too bad um, and so I think that's some ways to kind of help reframe change our expectations how the scenario is going to play out um, and, and learn to come up with some of these mind changes that will be helpful. And then lastly, I, like we talked about, I think how, how do we build our resources? Because these stresses are going to come, so what can we do to make ourselves stronger? So one of the things I think that's really helpful is starting just with healthy living choices. We need to make better choices, and I think it's really important that we impart some of these choices to our children while we still have them in our home, so that they will continue to make better choices when we go when they go away. I hated my mom because I should say, you know, I hated the fact that I'd go to other friends' houses and they had these great tasting cereals and I'd come home and we had all these just health food stuff and we didn't eat junk food and stuff in our home and I was like, why can't we have this? And I got frustrated. Um, but then when I got on my own, I was like, and I could have access to these things, like, these things are not good at all and I didn't feel good when I ate them. So I think I started eating healthier choices from an early age just because it was in part in our home and I think it's important to impart these truths to our next generation um, because if we don't do it, no one is and the world out there is preaching a message of, you know, all the commercials for food are either cheesy, oozing, chocolatey, dessert, sweet, junk food. You know, you don't see ads so much for health food that much. So. We have to teach our kids. So again, healthy choices, healthy meals, we need to make sure they're getting enough protein. Uh, we need to make sure they're getting enough whole foods, real foods, fruits, vegetables, and, and just a wide variety of nutritional food. I think getting enough sleep is really important. Our kids, like I mentioned, are just often underslept and chronically underslept, and that's a problem. Kids need exercise. Um, so 20 to, at least 20 minutes a day of movement, but ideally at least an hour, I think, more, you know, almost every day. Uh, is a goal that our kids need to do. So we have to find ways to do that. They tend to be cutting PE back at school, which is unfortunate. And so we gotta find, you know, get them out there, do something, join the Y, make them go swimming, things like that. Um, some other things, making sure you get enough water. Our kids often are dehydrated. So, make, you know, push water, have them carry a water bottle to school, things like that. Um, making sure that they have other people to do activities with, a part of a community, whether that's a spiritual community or if they're playing soccer or they're uh, gymnastics or whatever it is. I, having friends that they can interact with I think is really crucial. And so it can often, if, if you have a buddy to do something with, you can get through a lot of terrible things with someone else that, you know, really hard, challenging, test studying, things like that. Um, I learned that in medical school, in naturopathic medical school. It was. I could do much more working with other people than I could by myself as far as learning things. So I think that's important. Then just having activities that, that are recharging, relaxing, um, encouraging kids to do activities they like, you know, try to pull back the schedule if you can and just let them have play time, free time. Kids need that. Um, and that needs to be away from screens too. I think our kids are way over screened. It's easy to put them in front of it and because they 
kind of will entertain them. And so, but we need to take responsibility and try to get them away from screens. I think absolutely no more than two hours, preferably much less than that would even be better, no more than an hour. But, um, you know, definitely not more than two hours in a day for, for a child over, I think, I think that's over five. Uh, and under that, they recommend no more than an hour. I can double check those recommendations. But um, yeah, I mean, again, too much screens is definitely pro problematic. So we need to impart these healthy living choices in our children. Uh, we also need to minimize harmful exposures. So kind of cutting out the sugars, the salt, the junk foods. Uh, these foods do not add much to the, our kids' lives. I mean, they love them and they'll, they'll beg and plead and prod. And you know, I'm not saying 100%. You know, I like the 90-10 rule, 90% of the time, healthy 10% you can have a little fudging but if it's constant junk food it's problematic I mean I see dramatic mood changes in our kids as soon as they eat some candy it's like within 10-15 minutes they're bickering fighting just melting tears this and that it's like it's a nightmare so we got to minimize this stuff one of the things I see with ADD kids that I work with a lot in my practice is they're just so susceptible to sugars and artificial colors and these candies and junk food really just spins these kids out. And if you can pull these things back, we see dramatic changes often pretty quickly. Uh, with adults, I always recommend, you know, limiting caffeine, nicotine, alcohol. Hopefully we're doing the same, obviously, with our children, um, you know, or, you know, teaching them, talking to them about these things, not being good as they get older and go through puberty into teenage years and things like that. And then uh, I think with adults, but also kids, minimizing exposure to people who are a drain on us. We often spend way too much energy on 10% of the pop people we interact with. So, you know, helping our kids say that, you know, if it's not like working out, they don't have to pursue these relationships. Um, so, you know, trying to give them, uh, you know, make them empowered to make good friend choices as much as possible. So lastly, um, you know, making some nutritional interventions, I definitely would suggest uh, talking with a naturopathic doctor or your doctor or anything like that uh, to personalize a recommendation. But these are some things that I think can be helpful uh, as we go forward. So some nutrient support, I think a multivitamin is really important. Uh, I prefer whole food based multivitamins. Um, there's a couple store brands I like, Mega Foods is one. Um, we use one in our office called Innate. Um, there's some other different whole food nutritional brands out there. I think that's much more important than a bunch of synthetic isolates. Uh, B vitamins can be really helpful for stress and they can be really good for our kids too. They're under a lot of stress taking extra B vitamins, a B complex. Calcium and magnesium is a big issue in our culture. We're not getting enough in our foods and our drinks and things like that. So taking some CalMag before bed I think is a really good idea. And the one I often, I push more than anything probably in my practice is fish oils, omega-3s. I think our, we're just really depleted in these. We're not getting enough from our foods. Um, so I think there's a whole bunch of benefits as far as brain chemistry, mood stabilization, uh, and just ability to function well. If we don't have these nutritional pieces in place, I think we just can't really do optimal work as we need to. So I think these are some of the key nutrients often that come into play. Uh, I'm going to put up a list of herbs that I've used for helping with stress. Most of these are ad what we call adaptogenic herbs, which are basically herbs that help us function better through stress. So I use these mostly with adults. I will use them with teenagers um, and sometimes, you know, pre-teenage. I wouldn't probably use most of these with young kids unless there's real exceptional circumstances. But like the Siberian ginseng, ashwagandha, licorice, rhodiola, holy basil. Um, these are really interesting herbs that can really help us function better. So if you're under a lot of stress, which most of us are, these herbs can often help. I've seen sometimes if someone's crashed into that phase three though, these can be too strong and can kind of push people and they're not feeling we're good. So they're not optimal for everybody, but it's a good place and they're generally pretty safe herbs that you can play around with, um, with you know older children, uh, teenagers, and, and for yourself as well. So. Uh, I think finding some other options to help calm down, body work, I love massage, I love acupuncture, craniosacral therapy, um, things like that. Just body work can really help kind of ground us and help get us back out of our minds into our bodies, which helps. Uh, exercise, it does the same thing. Spending time in nature, I know when I'm really spun out, if I can go for a hike, I just feel like a new person again. Uh, and then I think, you know, talking with someone, reach out if you're not seeing optimal functioning and you yourself or your children, reach out. I think naturopathic physicians are great at working at this stuff. So um, talk to someone. Um, you don't have to do this all on your own. So that's my spiel. I uh, hope it was informative. If you have any uh, questions, comments, hit me up. And uh, thanks for listening. Take care.